Chapter 8 The Magic of Friendship If you were to stop any man or woman in the street and ask, Have you such a thing as a real intimate friend to whom you can say everything, and from whom you can ask anything? Most of them would probably hesitate before answering, Yes, I have. Dr. Johnson reminds us, If a man does not make new acquaintances as he advances through life, he will soon find himself left alone. A man, sir, should keep his friendship in constant repair. You can do much to cultivate people, and if you want to enjoy life to the full, you should have friends in England, and try to have friends in every country. It is grand to be able to say, as someone said to me, I have a friend in every country of the world. It is one of the tragedies of life that so many friendships which begin well end badly. We grow away from people, and often this is sadder than going away from them. There are friends who pass and friends who remain. Few come with us all the way, but when you have qualified as a mental magician, you should know how to keep all your friends and add new ones as well. If your friends do not come with you all the way, it is not nearly always your fault. Have you not neglected them? in some way or other, showed little enthusiasm. Of course, we all know that friends can tell each other too much, and so spoil what might otherwise have proved a lasting comradeship. It is fun to keep something up to your sleeve. You instantly become more fascinating. Mystery lends charm to the personality. Mystery is a part of magic. A magician would never succeed unless he had plenty of mystery in his act. And the boars, they are those who lay all their cards on the table at once, giving themselves away in every detail. It is not good psychology to tell one story at a sitting, when the story which excites the most, whether in fiction or life, is the story which finishes at the spot where you want it to go on. Be tactful. Refrain from speaking unkind words. I can remember how once at a club meeting, People kept standing up in turns, saying something unkind about one of the characters in the room. One particular man had listened the whole evening without a murmur. By the end of it all, he stood up in defence of the criticised one and gave the back-biting conversation a kindly twist. He was different from the rest. Don't say that, he explained. I think he has been splendid, and anyhow, blank, blank, blank. Somehow it struck me as rather fine. Certainly I should like all my friends to be like that. Friends who thought so well of you that they could not bear to hear you ill-spoken of. So sensitive to what appeared to them your shining merits that they defended you at the first signs of reproach. It is a lovely thing to be perfectly loyal to a friend. There are rare friendships, like that of David and Jonathan, which flare magically into being because there is something in each that strikes a spark of spontaneous appreciation. Dante said of Beatrice, Whensoever she appeared before me, I had no enemy left on earth. The flame of charity kindled within me, caused me to forgive all who had ever offended me. Always find something fresh to admire and appreciate in the object of your affection. And tell them so. Compliment again and again. Be grateful for friends. You begin to make friends with a person when you begin to make sacrifices. You sacrifice your thoughts and your time and some of your money. You will dream of how you will give and devote yourself to that friend. And you do. The friendship remains as long as you make the sacrifices continue, as long as you are prepared to do something. And ask something of your friends. If they are not used now and again, they do not think you care for them. To offer someone your, you love the gift of friendship, you must give what is wanted of you, and no more. And having gained their affection, you must follow up and follow through 
To make the friendship vital and lasting, you must do things to keep the comradeship alive. Two friends have been jogging along through the years, not noticing that they were getting older. Then something happens that jars them into the realisation that they are no longer as young as they used to be when life was fun. It throws them into a panic. It makes them feel that they are missing something. They have been too busy trying to make a fortune to have much gaiety together. They have always been going to. They let their chance of a good time together slip by, then suddenly they wake up to the fact that it is nearly all over. You must never be like that. There is magic in friendship when you can continue the fun right through the old age together. You have not had time to write letters to each other, been too busy to phone. It is always I am in a tremendous hurry, my dear. Nobody knows what for. Suddenly you begin to feel as one does during the last dance of a ball, tired but keen, and you decide to make the most of each bar of music before you go home. It is then that you turn instinctively and lovingly to the friends who are left. You talk about the good old days. When you let yourselves go and paint to the town red, you will have those disturbing moments at eventide when you feel a little mean and a little dirty. Days of haste in word and deed, the worst in you has conquered. Dear one hurt, you wish you had been different. You can be different. You can think of these things during meditation and determine to do something about it. Your subconscious will guide you and tell you what to do to keep your friends as keen as they were in the beginning. Someone said to me, I did not know how to make friends. I would see people whom I thought would make wonderful friends, but I did not know how to approach them. There came a day when the person lay in hospital, and those who wanted so much to become her friend came forward to offer love and sympathy. One visit, and they came again and again. I suppose I must sound foolish, she said, but I am glad it happened. I never knew before how lovely people could be. I did not know anyone could be loved as much as people seemed to love me. They were all so kind. Perhaps if I had made the first step, they would have been only too glad to welcome me into their little circle. Travelling from London to Manchester by train, a man shared his carriage with only one other man. Neither spoke. Both wanted to. Their train arrived, they rose, collected their hats, overcoats and suitcases, and made a simultaneous dash for the door. Of course they struck. And then one man spoke. Pair of fools, what? he grinned. Like to have a chat with you sometime. So long. Unless there are introductions, nobody seems pleased to see anybody else, and this is particularly noticeable in railway carriages. You must have friends. Get out more. Mix more freely. Meet other people. Widen your interests. If you are lonely, don't think that you must necessarily receive friendship. Give it. Don't hold back. Give it of yourself to others. Do something. Do it for others. Loneliness is not a physical state, but a mental state. You can feel desperately lonely in a crowd. I once saw a framed motto on the wall of a guest room. I am part of all that I have met, it said, but I know that it can also mean, and a part of me belongs to those I meet. We are a part of everyone we meet. You must feel and think yourself a friend, and go one step further and actually see yourself as already a friend. Your subconscious will assimilate this, and then go about its own way to work the magic of friendship for you. Whatever your subconscious urges you to do towards making a friend, do it immediately. So many people have a negative outlook about making friends. If the sun shines today, it will rain tomorrow. They go through life expecting the worst all the time. If you tell your subconscious that a certain person will snub you rather than welcome you as a friend, then it won't be any good. The subconscious works to your dictation. It gives you exactly what you expect. You can go from one glorious friendship to another if you talk to your subconscious in the right way. Friendships that can help you attain your wildest dreams, but you must be positive in your attitude. 
The magic word is attitude. Your attitude determines your altitude. You can have top class friends, friends to be proud of, and the doubting Thomases will say, well, well, he wasn't such a fool after all. It is the belief within you that brings results. The essential of success of making good friends is that your desire must be an all-obsessing one. As Napoleon Hill says, get a burning desire. Whatever you want, make that thing or that person your magnificent obsession. The way to work magic in getting friends is unknown to the majority of people. Many people would give anything to know what I'm telling you in this book. You can have the best friends anybody ever had. You must realize that people may be genuinely delighted to see you, but may not have the time or inclination to develop a closer friendship yet a while. It takes time with some people. People can be pleased to see you often without necessarily wishing to become bosom friends all at once. You must not hurt or annoy, be annoyed with these types, but understanding. It is no use thinking that everybody should be especially nice to you because you live alone or are lonely. To make friends, you have to see a person regularly and often, and above all, make yourself of use to them. Give guard and shears to the man who is without them. Offer to a babysit if you know a couple who cannot get out together. If you have a car, take a sick or tired man for a drive in the country, or give a lift into town to someone you know and see waiting at the bus stop. Little kindnesses work magic in the cultivation of friends. Be more interested in the other person than in yourself, and have the grace never to show boredom if the other fellow talks too much. Service to others is the most important thing to remember. Your circle of friends will widen with each kind act. You must have friends. Preferably friends in every country, so that your subconscious can tap, tap, tap them to your advantage. Distance has ceased to have any meaning, whatever region of the world you occupy. You are neighbours now. Why not invite the lady next door in for a cup of tea? Why not ask the man in the flat above to come and share your television? When did you last speak to them? Ask if they have had their holiday, where they are going or where they have been. Talk only of pleasant things. Is there somebody you should be caring about? Think. Surely not your mother. And now it's too late. These can be sad words, words that are said when somebody you love has died or gone away. You begin to think of all that you might have done. Face the fact that you can never get time back. Always remember that, and be loving and patient now. Remorse is an awful thing. Recently a man jumped under a train and killed himself. He left a note behind him saying he was torn by remorse. That was why he had done it. He could not get it off his mind, the things he could have done, but it was too late. When the winter snows came, neighbours who had preserved a cold indifference to each other for months, sometimes years, broke the ice and had a word with each other. Each gave each other warming drinks. You could say, like the men in the railway carriage said, fools, aren't we? Once when Sophie Tucker flew into London, she took a suite at the Savoy Hotel, but decided that the suite was on the small side. She wanted to entertain. I've got friends, and when you've got friends, you just have to throw parties, she said. The Savoy saw to it, and that this red-hot mama was moved into a bigger suite. The rooms were like a bower of flowers and good luck messages were piled high on the writing desk. Every one of these will be replied to by the time I go to bed tonight, she said. I refuse to have a secretary. I write every letter myself. When you've got friends, pal, you got to give, see? Sophie Tucker knows how to be a friend all right. You've got to give, see? Giving and preferring to give is the magic that brings friends. It's sad how many people shy off the idea of having anyone in their home. They even boast that they keep themselves to themselves. This attitude is all wrong. It is negative. Anyone who thinks like this must never expect to work magic. If we do not get to know and generally befriend our neighbours, how are we going to meet people and make new friends? Mentioned, mention the word entertaining, and some people imagine an elaborate dinner party like you read about in the glassy magazines. 
it is not necessary. A cup of tea or coffee, a drink of beer or wine, is quite enjoyable when you meet for a chat. But I will say this, that when you have mastered what I have been saying, you will want to give elaborate dinner parties, you will want to dress for dinner, because you will have raised your standard of living and like attracts like. You will give them and be given them in this new life of luxury that magic will bring. The waste of life lies in the love we have not given, the powers we have not used. It is the stinginess of spirit that wears us out, the anxiety lest we give more than we receive. This destroys us. The way to work magic with friendship is to go beyond the minimum requirements of friendship, the surplus effort, the overflowing of the cup of joy, the doing of the undemanded deed, is what put magnetism into us and attracts the things we want. Entertaining at home is a lovely way to get to know people. You should take a great interest in others and encourage friendship. Was your trip a success? Shows that you have the other person's happiness at heart. Did you enjoy the party? Shows you are really interested in the other person's life. Ask only questions of general interest. Do not pry into private affairs. That is the easiest way to part company. Live to help others and forge friendships with them. Simply opening a door for someone to pass through is an expression of friendship. The more you live to help others in the overcoming of their obstacles, the more certain you are solving your own. You are purifying yourself, raising your vibration with every unselfish action, and purification lifts you to the highest plane of consciousness where you are able to get real guidance. You can talk, even if the stranger is a woman, you don't greet her with the words, Say, what time is your husband coming home? You may get a slap on your face for the imp impudence. You are riding for a fall like that. But say, what beautiful scenery, isn't it? Or, isn't it a glorious day? If you are at a concert, for instance, you can say, What beautiful music, isn't it? And she will respond. I like the words of Shakespeare. But if the while I think of thee, dear friend, all losses are restored and sorrow end. Sorrows can end, or be made easier to bear when friends share and comfort each other. Friendship brings out the magic. It has been there in your mind all the time, but in a deep freeze. Suddenly you meet someone, and you know instinctively he or she is your, is your kind of person. A friend of mine from sunny Australia remarked how blank everyone here looks, and someone from South Africa was positively amazed at the lack of radiance he saw on the faces of the English people. In Italy, Spain and Mexico, a face is an instrument of expression. As a great novelist said, whole sonatas are played on it by its excitable possessor. You should have a smile for everybody. Your gay, infectious spirits and wonderful charm, which I hope you will get from reading this book, will attract people to you. You will be a new and exciting you. Make friends with actors and actresses who thrill you on stage and television. Drop a line of appreciation to the authors who write books you admire, or books that have helped you. Write to those who give you pleasure over the radio, in newspapers and magazines. People won't come knocking on your row pleading to be a friend. You must make friends yourself in every possible way you can. A miner once told me in the burst of confidence what he thought of a certain well-known actor. There's nothing high hat about that feller, he said, looking at lots of these famous men. Why, brother, this bird hobnobs with them men, not like he was patronizing them, you understand, but like he likes them, and believe me, they like him too. Ever watch one of those films in which the men bang each other on the back with a strangled cry of buddy? We like to think of our best friends like that, true as steel, staunch as a lion, faithful until death. A famous film star who was one of the sincerest people you could ever come across said that if there was anything he disliked it was insincerity in any form. I think the thing that gets my goat quicker than anything else is to have someone come gushing up to me and say, Why, old man, how are you? I'm so glad to see you again. What have you been doing with yourself? And then... When I answer, either he's turned away to say howdy to someone else, 
or if he's still standing there, he's not listening to me, but looking around to see who else is there. It makes you feel that they don't really give a tinker's damn about you, after all. Pay attention and always be nice. It reminds me of a true story. Fans turned out in force when Frank Sinatra was booked by an Atlantic City nightclub. One girl stood outside Sinatra's hotel two days waving a placard that said, I adore Frank Sinatra. Sinatra paid no attention to her. On the third day, the girl placard read, You've had your chance, I adore Elvis. See what I mean? Jane Austen, who created the novel based on character instead of action, makes a figure in one of her books say of another. You never see a fault in anybody. All the world are good and agreeable in your eyes. I never heard you speak ill of a human being in my life. To take the good of everybody's character and make it still better, and say nothing of the bad, belongs to you alone. This is how we all should be. Focus on the gold. Look for the gold. This is, and this is a war story. When the remnant got back to the trenches, one boy discovered that his pal was missing. He asked his officer if he might go out into no man's land to look for him. The officer said, yes, you may go, but it isn't worth it. The boy went and in a little time returned mortally wounded. Before he died, he said to his officer, it was worth it, sir, for when I reached him, he said, I knew you'd come. That is friendship, real friendship. Many friends travel with us only to the crossroads, and then, whether the farewell be conscious or unconscious, we turn in different directions. What a tragedy, yet it seems to happen in the lives of every one of us. It does not always prove disloyalty or failure. It means that we are in the grip of different tendencies and circumstances. Destiny would seem to bear us east and west. We must guard against this as much as we can. You have friends, I have friends. The man next door has friends. Watch him trot off to the golf club every Saturday morning. Let us try to keep what friends we have, for what a treasure beyond compare it is to have at least one friend who has been with us throughout a lifetime. Have I achieved what it takes to be a friend? I hope so. The Halifax Daily Courier and Guardian, September the 6th, 1957, speaks of me as, quote, on stage and before the camera, a slick, self-assured mental magician, off-stage, a comfortable, comforting, comforting and unassuming man.